Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can set up and use Wallows to help kind of see your finances, where you're spending money on subscriptions, and essentially kind of figure out, you know, is this really where you want to be spending your money at um, in the long term? So let's get started. All right, so we've got a terminal open. What we're gonna do here is log into our server that we have for this video. And what we'll do is first off, install Docker. Um, so we'll add um, the Docker repository to be able to um, install Docker. Download docker.com, Linux CentOS, and docker.ce.repo. And then we should be able to now install Docker CE. And we will let that run. That'll take a few seconds. So while we while we do that, we will update our DNS on the back end. So we'll go to our GitLab instance here, um, and we'll log in. Um, but you gotta type in the right password, guys. And then we will go to our DNS project and edit our hosted zone, essentially. Um, once we commit, it'll go through a series of CICD pipelines to essentially uh, upload this file over to our DNS server and enable the DNS for this entry. So what we'll do is Wallace in A and then 77, and then we will commit this at Wallace commit that and we are good with that. Um, so what we can do is go to Wallace GitHub and see the open source personal subscription tracker here. So you can see that there's a few things here, but what we're going to do is do the Docker installation here. And we're actually going to use Docker Compose because it, it would make a lot of sense here in this case. Um, so Docker is still being installed, so we'll give it a few seconds here. All right, so now that Docker's finished installing, we will enable Docker and we will start it. Now, what we want to do is install Docker Compose. So actually we need to go and grab the Docker Compose binary from their GitHub. So compose, releases, download, and we're going to grab the 2.5.0 version. You can grab the latest one. I usually just use 2.5.0 for most of my demos since I know it works, um, but you should probably grab whatever the latest is out there. Um, and then we'll output it to use a local bin at Docker Compose. And then what we'll do here is make sure that it is executable. So chmod plus x, use a local bin doc compose. And then you can check that it actually works by doing doc compose version. And we can see that it returns the version. So what we are here do here is vi doc compose .yaml. So we'll create the compose file. We will copy this from the GitHub and paste it in here paste. And then we'll update a few values. So um, we're not in Toronto, although I do want to visit Toronto sometime. That would be kind of cool. Um, so we'll set that. And then the rest you can essentially keep as default. So we'll save this in here like that. And then we can do a Docker compose up and a detach. So this will pull the image and let it run. So while that, that happens, we will actually log into our CA server. Um, and this will allow us to set up TLS on the server um, so that it is encrypted. Um, so what we'll do is make a directory, change to Wallace, and then we'll do step CA, create the certificate, wallace.dragon.local, and then specify the cert, dragon.local.cert, and then the key. Then it's gonna ask for our provisioner key, which we will go to our vault warden in here to grab. Oh, I'm gonna have to restart Chrome here. Here we go. Copy that password, paste that, and then we got it. So then we'll copy out the, the two files over to our server.
and then we are good with this terminal. So we'll go back to our Wallace server. Um, looks like there's an error pulling it down. So let's uh, try it one more time. Here we go. So now, now that's pulling. And while that pulls, we will log into our um, Wallace server, Wallace dragon.local, and we will um, set up the TLS install nginx. Um, so we'll use nginx to do proxy passing pass um, back to our system. And then it will essentially do the TLS termination and back to our app. And then we will do make directory p etsy pki nginx private. We will move the cert to etsy pki nginx, and then we'll move the key to etsy pki nginx private. Then we will edit the nginx configuration here. We'll scroll all the way down. If you're using Vim or Vi, you can hit Shift G and get all the way down to the bottom. We're going to uncomment the TLS section here. And then we'll update some values for it to use. So we will update the certificate uh, because it's named Wallace, um, Wallos, dragon.local, dot cert, and then update the key wallows dragon dot local dot key and then we'll do the proxy pass so http localhost 8282 and oh um you actually have to type proxy pass in the front proxy pass and that should be it so the port for 8282 is because if you look at the doc compose file we will be listening on 8282 which will then forward to 80 on the container um so now that this is running we should be able to just do docker PSA. We can see that it is running, it's up, and it is listening. So what we should be able to do in a browser now is go to HTTPS wallace.dragon.local and it should load. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, we got to restart Nginx after I change. Restart Nginx, there we go. <laughs> and now it loads. Um, so we'll set up our account in here and we can set up our main currency so I am in the US so we'll do US and then we will log in here and this is essentially your kind of startup page um, and this is where you can kind of start adding your subscriptions to see how much your subscriptions will cost over time. So like, for example, we can, you know, say we have an Amazon subscription, we pay, you know, um, one hundred and like twenty dollars. I don't actually even know how much I pay for my Amazon Prime subscription right now. <laughs> um, and this is billed yearly. And like, you know, let's say it's billed like, you know, on the 13th of every month um, on a credit card, you can add categories in here. Um, hmm. I don't even know what category, um, clearly productivity. Yes. Amazon for productivity. Um, and then you can see here that now I have the subscription. You can add other ones like Netflix and do like, you know, 14 or $14 a month or something. Do monthly starts on this day, um, credit card or any other type of thing. And you can save that. And then from here, you can kind of see that you have, you know, all your subscriptions, you can actually go and see your stats where, you know, I got two active subscriptions, overall monthly cost will be 2396 per month, the yearly cost is, you know, 200 and something, um, you know, average monthly cost, most expensive cost and, you know, amount due this month. So, you know, it kind of gets your stats and kind of puts it out in front of you to kind of tell you, hey, this is, you know, how much all your stats will essentially be, uh, you'll be paying based off of your subscriptions you have entered. Um, so this is a good way to kind of keep track of, you know, how much you're going to be paying um, and maybe even be a good way to be like, hey, you know, I am paying a lot. Maybe I should start thinking about, you know, other subscriptions or canceling some subscriptions. Um, so but this is not financial advice um, by any means. But if you're looking for something to help you kind of gauge your financial subscriptions, this is a pretty good tool. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.